The Little Book of John the Revelator, Chapter 1. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne, a book written within and on the back side, sealed with seven seals. Revelation, Chapter 5, Verse 1. Chapter 1. With much excitement, we gathered before the Lord to view with Urim the stone tablet of the little book of John. And we all felt the wonder of the moment that the day had finally arrived to receive what was written in the book. And it came to pass that when I began to look immediately, the sweet presence of the Lord appeared before me. And the nearness of his presence brought me much needed comfort and all my anxiety vanished away. And I said, thank you, Lord, for coming. And it was hard to not cry for the graciousness of the sweet presence before me and because he is my only home and all my temporalities melted away and that which was before me had my full attention. And after I gained my composure, I said, we sit before you, Lord, to be instructed because our knowledge is small and fleeting and your truth is eternal. Please say what you will and we will rejoice in it forever. And as always, the Lord spoke with his supreme authority in a very quiet and personal way. And he said, I come here this day to greet in loving kindness all my dearly beloved throughout the world who come unto me and who profess my name and who put their faith and hope in me. And I have come to reveal with my own mouth that which I have written on the backside and within the little book. And my father has been waiting for this day holding the book in his right hand of loving kindness. And he has been patiently pondering and meditating upon this moment when this little book would be unsealed and open before his children for them to know and understand. And the fierceness of a war was upon me to prevent me from opening the seven seals that had bound this little book for so long. And Mikael came to my aid to help me and all the Elim, reference number 126, trees, of the heights have been my helpers, and I have prevailed to open the book, and I did so not long before your forty days, and I fought again to bring forth this book of remembrance with you at my side in order to prepare the way. And I then opened the first seal and made a great declaration of truth by the sound of a trump, and that which was unsealed was the first foundation of Shabua, and my father poured out his prophecies, and each declaration of the truth is that which has opened a seal because the little book has been sealed by the lies of nations since the time of the flood. And the truth began to sweep over the earth unto the multitudes of the peoples of the nations. And the foundations of Shabua now can be known by my righteous people. And by the declaration of the truth, I opened another seal, three and one half years thereafter, over and over until the sixth seal, which was followed by a period of seven years, before the seventh seal was opened. And each and every seal was opened in this manner. So now at this time, I have opened all the seven seals by the sound of a trump and all my father's prophecies are being poured out upon the earth. And each open seal has issued forth to become enlarged and expanded. And even now at this time, they are approaching their full expression and the limits of the tolerance of the Urko to she are near. And when each seal first opened, they began as a foreshadow of what was to come. And now the truth can be before the eyes of all people in its fullness. And at this time, the Elam of the Heights stand at the ready to spread the news of that which I am about to bring to you. And you will see that it is very important for my people to live by the seven foundations of Shabua. And however these foundations are expressed in diligence and holiness, among my people will allow them to find the light, only to be drawn into the covenant and be in place to find the protections that I have prepared for them during tribulation times. And the knowledge of these things is now coming to the world with my Father's rich blessings and with an assurance of eternal life, if you do these things and endure to the end. And I said to the Lord, we are willing, Lord, to do your will, and we are going to present these things to the world for you not because we are worthy vessels, but because you have asked us to, because you alone are worthy and because we love you. And it is the desire of your heart. We will do it with full hearts. And the Lord said, the little book tablet has been written and prepared and brought forth to my people just for this time in their hour of need. 
In order for you to understand my writing inside this tablet and the place it has during the course of the earth, coming up to these end times, I would instruct you and remind you of the function and circumstances of the other tablets in the Book of Remembrance and the role they played in preparing the way for the establishment of the religion of Shabua and the Covenant Tablet, which is written to be the background writing behind what I have written inside the little book. The first tablet by which sacred writing first came upon the earth, the Repentance Tablet of Seth, was originally written by Ebedel with the help of the waters and the moss, and it is called the Repentance Tablet, and the moss grew upon the stone in the shape of the writing on this tablet, and when Azura found it, she gave it to Seth, and when his mother saw it, she said, You must make marks upon a stone like what you see here, so it will not be lost. And Seth was obedient to his mother, and after that, Enoch inscribed it in a way that it could be better understood. And because of this tablet, the world now has the account of our first parents in Eden. And our first parents both expressed in Eden the holy order of Elda, each one doing their part by expressing their unique dominion, both as a man and a woman, and they both began to perform this independently before they were married. And the holy order came with them into Eden, having these two parts. And they were pure in heart and forgiven before they even left Eden. And because the establishment of Shabua is eternal, I was invited by that covenant to enter into all the elements of the earth. And because they both had expressed the holy order in its fullness, I was able to take them into all the spirits of life and creation with me. And that act also became eternal and resulted in my taking every soul with me into the Er Kodeshi in the temporal world. And thus was Olam transformed into Eden. And be aware that Hava did more to lay the foundation of Shabua than her song of the dance and raising up seven times in her rich awareness of her forgiveness. For she also joined all the Er Kodeshi together, enabling the covenant of Shabua to be established which covenant is a joining between righteous mankind and the Er Kodeshi in bonds of affection. And she could not have done this except Yahad first had defined and named all the elements in creation that he came across, and he informed them of who and what they were, and named them all. And then when he had done this, the elements of creation were ready for Hava to come after him, to join them together, and announce to influence them, who were their friends, and who needed their love. And this shows how the two parts of the holy order function together. As it emerges out of the sanctity of marriage, and in this way, mankind did their part of the second decree of creation. And all of creation became living souls with the spirit of my presence in them, together with the spirit of the perfect self of each of the children of my father. And thus the two parts of the holy order are equal, and Yatsikat performed what she could not do, and Hava performed what he could not do. And by these things, they both fulfilled the measure of their creation as a man and a woman. And it was their marriage that brought creation to be completed. And what he defined is still upon the earth, and what she joined together is still joined. And thus the two parts of the holy order are still affecting all the living spirits of life in creation. And out of these expressions of the two parts of the holy order, together with me, Shabuah came to be established by Melchizedek and Zedeketelebab. And as it has been demonstrated by the righteous throughout the course of the earth who have come into this order, that the men must do 40 days alone with me to confirm that their calling is indeed valid, which calling originated at the foundation of the world and also to learn the nature of their individual vision concerning it. And I called them with my own voice, with this holy calling, and I ordered them unto this calling before they were born. And the women were designated by me from before the beginning of creation, and the women do 22 days alone with me to confirm whether or not they have been so designated from the foundation of the world. And they can do their days in groups of seven plus one, if family cares require it. And both these orders of service must have a recognition ceremony showing forth that their people affirm that the Spirit has borne a strong witness of this calling after all the safeguards have been met. 
and this must be done with the elements of righteousness by the elders of the people. And I have promised in our covenant of the community together that I will send before my righteous people the holy order of my priesthood, and the token of the covenant has been before you, even the book of remembrance, which unfolds to you the fullness of the gospel and how to live your lives in the covenant of Shabuah and of how to prepare to stand before me at the judgment of the last day. And the tablet of Bedal has influenced the entire course of the earth because it allowed me to fulfill my task after the flood of preparing the world for the long duration when the righteous would live intermingled among the wicked. And I drew this tablet on the ground so Enoch could be instructed in how to establish a people of the right hand of my father, which is Yod, or that is to say, the church. And in Yod, before Shabua was established, there were those who could cross over, often a husband and his wife, who were called men of Abarah. And they could cross over in their hearts and souls into Eden and back again to feel the love of the father that presides there. And since ancient times, this truth has been upon the earth among the righteous. And every generation of mankind has benefited from this tablet because it has been the principal means whereby the doings of Enoch have been remembered. And this tablet has been called the water tablet because it speaks of the living water and because there are instructions upon it for circle drawing, which convey requests of kindness to the sweet Erechodeshi for Anakist. And this tablet enabled the church to come to the village of Ebenim, where Noah lived. And it became the element of righteousness for him to use, to call forth the flood and bring rest to Anakis. And it prepared the way in like manner for Melchizedek and Zedekedelebab to establish Shabua, which is the covenant entered into between mankind and the Erechodeshi in creation, which in turn enabled me to establish permanently the two parts of the holy order in the temporal earth. And the tablet of Badal and the information on it became the foundation for the ancient people to be able to come together and form in common religious expression in their worship together, and it thereby strengthened the power of righteousness. So this tablet has had a profound effect upon the people of the earth and has been the framework upon which the seven foundation of Shabuah emerged. And the guidance tablet was written by Enoch to guide the church in ways that would bring the joys of happy living to both the righteous and to my father. And down through the ages, these guidances have been used for both good and evil. And this tablet enabled the covenant of Shabuah to be understandable to both the righteous and the Erechodeshi. And Zedekedelebab established that both the Erechodeshi and mankind would keep the guidances together. And by these means, the request by the council and elder that the Erechodeshi would be members of the church with mankind were granted. And now the Erechodeshi are our fellows in our gift of life. And my presence is in both, so we can understand one another. And the man became what we could feel in one another. And my creatorship flourished in the living souls in creation. Reference number 127. The Lord speaking here is saying this in this way, because he feels so much to be one of us. And the covenant tablet was based upon what the Erechodeshi taught rock. And I drew it in wet sand myself in its final form for Shem. And I instructed him in all it contains. And the knowledge of it allowed him and his wife to establish forever the religion of Shabua. And my father loves and respects all expressions of holy worship by the righteous all over the earth among its righteous peoples. And the covenant set firmly in place for all eternity, the joining together in the bonds of love and mutual support between mankind and creation. And it has brought heavenly understanding concerning both salvation and redemption. And this tablet not only prophesied my walk in the flesh as a man, but it contained vital information that became the very means for me to find the fullness of my vision as I walked in the flesh among the children of my father. And Shum, using the urn, saw the protection tablet, and her heart was thrilled to behold the protections it speaks of. 
albeit she could not comprehend all of the information on it that spoke of the nations being judged, because in her day there were no nations. And as you know, her place in the holy order arises out of the sanctity of marriage with her husband in his expression of his calling, and it has been this way since the beginning for all the men of this order. And she had her husband make the protection tablet, and he used one of the stones he had obtained in his youth on the side of the cliff when the rocks of Ebedel had sought him out. And the protection tablet has on it information about how to call forth judgment upon the nations and how the righteous can find safety when the world is destroyed by fire. And thus by the Urim she was able to see afar and behold the pathway of holiness. And nations were created in their inception for the purpose of suppressing Shabuah, or utterly destroying it. And it is my father that judges the nations. And at this time, his judgments are well underway and are soon coming into their full effect. And the tablet of the little book that is now before your eyes is not for those of ancient times. Rather, it is for my righteous people who are gathering unto me at this closing day of Babylon. And I wrote it for their benefit so they could understand what is happening in the world around them during tribulation times, at the end of the days of the dominance of evil, when we will find joy together in a new heaven and a new earth, at the beginning of the great gathering, in preparation for my returning once again to the earth as a man of flesh to reign upon the earth. And I wrote very carefully inside the stone with my own hand at the time of the ancient world of Olam, and it was written during the formation of the earth at creation. And I wrote it anticipating the course the world would take, having a foreknowledge of all things. And I hid it up in the earth in a place I had selected. And I guided you to find this stone. And I saw to it that the stone of this tablet was not purchased with money, so it would remain clean before me. And I brought it to you with care early on, so that it could remain in the purity of it, and Shem and Shum guided your hands when you cut out the stone to reveal what was written inside it. And Ebedel was watching over you because of the intensity of the war that was against this tablet coming forth. And she had long awaited the time when what I wrote would see the light of day and be brought to the world. And all the Earl Kodeshi had been lonesome for a multitude of days for Shabua to return to the earth. And all the powers of heaven rejoiced to discover what has been written therein, only to be now revealed to all their loved ones throughout the earth. And the Elam of the heights have spread the news among all the Urkodeshi, and now stand ready to bring the news of it to the world. And Ibidel has often pled with me to hasten this tablet, and Kabodiel has been patient, and they were among those who wept much with John, when no one was found worthy to open the seals of the little book. And the Earl Kodeshi are at this time preparing with much rejoicing for this day when it is made manifest. And their intention is to bring a strong witness to the souls of the righteous who find what is written therein. And the Earl Kodeshi are at this moment readying themselves together with all their fellows to sing praises to me and lay down their crowns at my feet to declare that I am worthy to be known and loved and worshipped from on high by all the concourse of heaven, and they are rejoicing because I have prevailed to open this little book, and I have now come to you to unfold that which is written therein. And all that which I have written there within this tablet can be distinguished by the images there and by colors in the stone, and I will explain it to you. And it has been written for all my dearly beloved who allow me to embrace them in my arms of love with the tender blessings of forgiveness and rich understanding, and it is written in its simplicity. And by that which is written upon this tablet, I say to all the righteous, when you receive these things, I will unfold to you by my spirit the truth of your world, and we shall wipe away our tears together, and we shall sing anthems of praise together, and we shall congregate together at the throne of Anarchist to praise him for his loving kindness together. And the Lord continued, and he said, I would now bring you further understanding of the spiritual powers 
that are now at work among you in these times of tribulation, because the events in the world at this time resemble many of the conditions that came just before the flood. And it is important that the righteous learn to discern how to divide the powers confronting them and their little ones. And great forces are at work, and at this time they are battling for the power of God. And the flood brought changes for the world that are in effect even now, which need to be understood in light of the little book and the understanding it can bring. And there are four perspectives of that which occurred in Helia with the flood. And the first will be from the perspective of the Dakar Darchi. And they see all that transpired there to be their war on the Erkodeshi. And they rightly concluded that they overcame the Erkodeshi. And they used the wicked people in Helia with their elements of wickedness to pursue their war against them. But in their moment of triumph, when the Erkodeshi wanted to die, and desired to give up their purpose as the home of mankind, and were overcome in their despair. The fountains of the great deep were broken up, and the waters of the flood swept in upon them and washed their dominion away right before their eyes. And their evil Nephilim children were destroyed, and all they had set their hearts upon in domination over the children of men was gone, and they were suddenly caught up in the immensity of confusion. And they swelled up with great harsh accusations against one another, and their hatred reached into the abyss and firmly planted itself to bring a new added condition of darkness there. And they were in complete disarray and could find no place to turn to continue their evil ways. And Asael and Semehaza were heavily wrought upon with accusations by their fellows, and they had to hide themselves from the discord. And in this way, the righteousness of Noah as a man of Abara, triumph to bring rest to anarchist and to creation. And Noah fulfilled the vision of his name. Reference number 128. Noah, Strong's number 5146. And the Darkard Archie responded to their great loss by determining that it was useless to fight against the Erkodeshi. And when they recovered, they turned their efforts to be against men of Abara and thereafter against Shabuah with its seven foundations. And there is a second view of what took place with the flood concerning the wicked in the valleys of Helia. And this view is that of the Erekodeshi. And they saw it as a war on the fatherhood of Anarchist because they could no longer feel him by the elimination of righteousness and any holiness from being in their midst. And they watched in horror as they viewed the utter disregard for his purposes for creation and the knowledge of the conditions of Elda was lost for the Erekodeshi and Helia. And the Erekodeshi there also grieved heavily for the destruction of the visions of his children, and they lost sight of their own definitions. And they mourned upon hearing the sounds of death constantly, and the hard and cruel words spoken against children wore down the Erekodeshi. And they viewed that word spoken to denigrate decency, innocence, and righteousness were blasphemous words spoken against Anarchus as the father of all things good. And they were helpless to find ways to fill his presence, and their despair grew day upon day in the intensity of it, and year upon year with no abatement. And finally they were so beaten down with no one to succor them that they wanted to die. And the council of elder that were there in the valley were the last to give up their place in creation. And the Erkodeshi outside of Helia responded to this by deciding to cling to the righteous who could cross over and to intimately hover over them to intensify their protection for them. And in these things, I, as the creator, saw the need for Shabua and prevailed with one foot on the edge of eternity and the other foot on the water. And there was a third view of all that happened in Helia among the wicked who were gathered there. And it was my view that all the wickedness there was a war on my vision, both as the messenger of salvation and the prince of righteousness and redemption, and it was against the holy order itself. And evil created the conditions in Helia that it was common to deny any existence of my father. Therefore, there was no expectation of being redeemed back into his presence, and the view in Helia was firmly established 
that admitting an error was a sign of weakness. So repentance was utterly banned there with no prospect for salvation. And I knew that all that was occurring there could only be remedied with a just result. And for justice to come there, the agencies of the wicked had to come to be expressed fully. And so because of their cruel domination over the innocents there, I could not leave any of the righteous there to remain among them and still bring justice. So I instructed Amazia Dad and his band of rescuers, and I endowed them with power to rescue and take out any righteous who were there, leaving only the wicked by themselves and their children. And what happened to their children at the flood will be held for them to view in their eternal damnation. And for the children there, it was like the children in Sodom. And in the next life, Anakis will enfold them in his arms to hold them and heal them. And like Abraham, Noah constantly worried about any righteous being left behind and destroyed. And my response to this war on my vision was to make strong determinations to see to it that the holy order could be brought fully into the temporal world. And I established that it would have two parts when it was expressed upon the earth. And there is a fourth view of all that transpired in Helia, and it is the view of my father. And his view was that agency had run its course upon the temporal earth, and it had come to its full expression. And the righteous in Ma'in, who chose to repent, had become so holy in their righteousness and repentance, to the extent that they no longer could remain in the temporal world, but must be transfigured or translated and brought back into the glories of Eden. And the wicked of Helia, who chose to be wicked and to use the elements of wickedness, became so evil that any prospect of repentance was lost, and they could no longer remain in the temporal world, but must be taken unto that condemnation that they chose, and they must go into the first heaven only to be cast out, being found to be utterly void of love. And so my father responded to this fullness of the course of agency, and he sent boundaries for the forces of evil, seeing that now after the flood, for the long duration of the course of the earth, the righteous would so often be intermingled in their habitations with the wicked that boundaries must be set in place for them. And the boundary for the spirits of evil was that they could not come in to possess a righteous person or come to dwell with them unless they were invited by acts of sin. And it could not be inadvertent sin, but only sin accomplished by the intelligent use of agency. So if they committed fornication, the spirits associated with fornication would feel welcome to dwell with them or even possess their souls, and they would accompany them in their daily walk so that the wicked could look out with lustful eyes upon all that is before them, and evil will be well satisfied and multiplied in the strength of it. But for the righteous, the sanctity of marriage is their shield from such things. Or if a person repeatedly lies to deceive, then the evil spirit of lying will come to them and will become a part of their souls when they have seven themselves with lies and all their efforts to find dominance and advantage over their fellows will be driven by lies and the presence of these spirits will erase any twinge of guilt or shame. Or if they chose to imbib with drunkenness, then the evil spirits associated with that will be welcome to return often and will come to live with them and captivate them and seek to ever remain with them and be very hard to remove. And when any such spirits are present, they cannot simply be asked to leave, but must be sent somewhere to remain there, usually back to where they came from. And they are not sent with magic words, but by the authority of Elda, together with a strong presence of confidence in my presence. And my father responded further to set in place the limits of the tolerance for evil among the Erkodeshi and the righteous, to endure evil and wickedness until that limit has been met. And that limit comes when the agency and plans of the wicked expand to such an extent that they know to attack the four orders of creation, to eliminate them, then Selah, it is enough. And under these conditions, Mikael and Geira are free to act together with all the concourse of heaven and all the forces of holiness are free to assert themselves for anarchists, each in their calling and in their station to act and respond to the request of the righteous. 
and the desires of my father being buttressed by the holy order in the midst of the earth and the wicked will find no place to stand or to practice their evil ways. And because of this boundary being set, they can proceed no further in destroying my father's desires and purposes in creation as the father of them all. And the flood came upon them because the wicked in Helia effectively suppressed agency with slavery and with the intimidation of violence and by uttering dark sentences in their practice of sorcery and with stern commandments of harsh control. And in Helia, the practice of adultery and fornication came to the full in their practice of bringing the Nephilim children by the women there. And everything sacred about male and female became fully corrupted to the extent that there was no sanctity of marriage. And in Helia, they magnified the sounds of death with loud contention and rudeness before the God of heaven. And they made fearsome noises in war and fighting. And there was much discord and quarreling and expressions of anger against the children were more common than the songs of birds. And all the sweet moments of living life were thrust out from among them. And every person had to live their lives according to an evil master's wishes. And the book of life there had no entries in it for Anarchists to reminisce over. And indeed, those among the Erkodeshi there who were supposed to write in it did not even know there was such a book. And the masters of Seku in Helia dominated all who dwelt there, and they demanded to be worshipped as gods. And any expressions of the worship of Anarchists were forbidden, and the people were made to acknowledge their masters in all things, and express allegiance to them even for all their daily provisions. And they were compelled to give thanks to their masters for everything in their lives. And because of the acts of anarchists to set boundaries for evil, the limits of the tolerance of the Erkodeshi and the hosts of heaven came to the full, then as it will now in this day. And when the Darkardarchi began to bring forth the Nephilim, especially meant to attack the four orders of creation, the waters of the flood were ready to sweep over them. And when this limit of tolerance was met, it tipped the scales, and the wicked were destroyed by the waters of the flood. So when the righteous observe these things in the end of days, and these same conditions come up before your faces, that the four orders of creation are in like manner being attacked, you will know that once again, the limits of tolerance have come to be met, and the wicked will be destroyed by fire. And now is then. The Erkodeshi are pleading with Anarchus for a savior to come. And as I comforted them then, I comfort you now and say, Be patient and be comforted, because in a very little while it will be the year of release. And you will be free in the sevenfold covenant of Shabua. And before the time of the flood, the Erkodeshi did not know of that of which I spoke. But you can know now because you have been taught. And my response to the events of the flood was to raise up Shem and Shum, who the Erekodeshi named Melchizedek and Zedekedelebeth. And I asked the Erekodeshoi to marry them so that their marriage would not become subjected to the forces of evil that could overcome them. And I came myself to stand before the altar of Shabuah to firmly establish the two parts of the holy order upon the earth. And on the earth there are seven functions that issue forth out of the two parts which I established, and they are the four men's orders of service of Elda and the three women's clans. And it came to pass that right after the flood, the Erekodeshi began to realize how important it was for all of them to support one another. And the trees, the hills, the wind, and the streams began to bring to one another the news regarding encounters the righteous had with Anarchist in their crossing over, and the eyes and ears of the righteous became the means by which the Erekodeshi saw and heard the doings of Elda. And on the day Noah disembarked from the ark, Ebedel reminded all of the Erekodeshi that they must always remember that they must be steadfast in being also a home for one another. And all the Erekodeshi began to look forward to the promise that the covenant of Shabua would free them. And now in the tribulation times, the Erekodeshi are well acquainted with how to support one another and how to work together in perfect harmony with the righteous, ever watching for the signs of the limits of their tolerance 
and for the instructions of Shabua from the righteous in that day. And the Darkardarchi were in hiding one year for their fear of the day of forgiveness, and they would not come out. And all over the earth, the righteous everywhere had a respite from the opposition of accusations and temptations. And when they came out, they found that it was once again another day of forgiveness. And Halak was there with his sons at Salem. And the Darkardarchi stood afar off and looked with dim eyes, being unaccustomed to the light of forgiveness. And from a place in the north, they heard the news of the establishment of Shabuah. And the sounds of the Katsar struck fear into them, and they would not venture near Mount Pathak. And Semahaza was completely subdued among his fellows and had to take time to recover. And Asael took over the command of the Dakar Darchi in the same way he will in the end of days. And after the establishment of Shabuah was over, and Kebron and Ryuma were teaching, did the Dakar Darchi dare to approach Salem? And then Asael put forward that now the war must be against Shabuah, and the means would be weapons of war and the beautification of women. And all the Darkardarchi longed to have someone to covenant with them, in like manner as the Erkodeshi had done with mankind. And Asael provided them with someone to covenant with them, and Asael struck upon the idea that their new direction for the war would be to use weapons and enticements to cause nations to be formed, and leaders of nations would arise, and the Darkardarchi could covenant with them to gain strong control over lies that would suppress any knowledge of the seven foundations of Shabua. And they met in a cave near where Enoch rested, and it was there that it was determined by covenant among all the Darkardarchi that they would give themselves to covenant with nations to destroy all seven foundations of Shabua and see to it that they would be brought to naught, and then all Katsars would be silent. And they all took great delight in the plan and began immediately formulating lies against Shabua. And from that day on, the Darkardarchi sought to find out what Shabua was founded upon. And it was hard for them to comprehend things that were holy. And they had to rely on the leaders of nations to come to their aid. Reference number 129. Hammurabi is an example. And from the days of the rise of nations... The powers of darkness have crafted lies to suppress Shabua. And this little book was sealed by them, and the evil among men, together with the dark heart Archie, kept the truth of Shabua from the children of men. And over the thousands of years since then, explicit lies have been directed against each one of the seven foundations of Shabua. And in this way, the truth of Shabua has been hidden from the hearts and eyes of righteous mankind, and the righteous all down through the ages could only get a little glimpse of part of it. And at this time that we have together, I would prepare your heart so you can receive a knowledge of my preparations that are written upon this tablet, and they are the voices of the seven thunders. And I have and will continue to proclaim them with a loud voice, and by the sound of the trumps of Shabua and the grieving of my father will cause the consequences of the sins of the wicked to be poured out upon the earth, even according to that which they have chosen. And I allowed my servant John to view these things when he was bent down with grief and despair because of my suffering, and that notwithstanding the joys of my resurrection. And John was able to take in all the meaning of this tablet, to ponder upon it, and it was sweet in his mouth, because he beheld the triumph of my declarations. But the knowledge of the sufferings of the righteous and myself together with my father, was bitter in his belly, and it was bitter to behold how the wicked would suffer and curse God and die, that all that occurred in their world was to make way for the lighting down upon the earth of the arm of my loving kindness, to make a new earth and a new heaven, insomuch that the former things shall not be remembered nor come to mind. And I asked him not to write it, so there would be no defense against the voices of the seven thunders of Shabuah by the powers of darkness at the end of days. And so John only wrote what was going to happen from the perspective of the wicked and the pathway of protection for the righteous is now hereby revealed. And I have prevailed to open the little book and it is now in my right hand and my declarations have unsealed the truth about the seven foundations of Shabuah. 
And when the proclamation sounded, the prophecies of my father were poured out, and his thoughts and his meditations have brought about the knowledge of the consequences of the sins of the wicked of all the nations. And the wicked will view these consequences as courses, even though they chose to have them, and they will blaspheme God and attribute what happens to them to be the anger and vengeance of God. And they have filled the earth with lies, and they have crafted acts of darkness and spread them abroad through the authority of the leaders of nations, and their lies have covered the earth and spread out upon the seas and have gone to the rivers and fountains and extended up to the luminaries of the heavens and upon the very seat of evil and the waters of life. Even the Euphrates and even the air itself holds their lies. So the consequences of their sins and of their lies will come to all those places of abode, yea, even unto every one of them. And the purpose of the voices of the thunders is to allow the truth to uncover the lies, so that agency can come to the full in the lives of both the wicked and the righteous. The wicked will lose their dominion over the earth, and the righteous will inherit the new heaven and new earth. And because of the truth being thus declared with inescapable clarity, all the peoples of the nations can choose by purposeful decision which way they will go. And then the consequences of the sins of Babylon can rightly bring to them the judgments of God. And there will be much division between the light and the darkness. And it will be a day that my people must not walk in the way of the world, nor walk hand in hand with the dark hard archi. And they must come out of Babylon, so they do not receive the same consequences of sin as the world does. And I will lead them in the way to establish themselves in mine. And to say it once again, this is how my people will know when to find ways to abandon the Darkar Darchi. And that is when the powers of darkness attack the four orders of creation, which are living life to the full, agency, the sanctity of marriage, and service to anarchist. And when you see these things transpiring upon the land, you will know that the absolute fulfillment of the agencies of the wicked is at hand and has become complete. And many will see angels and find empowerment from on high to heal and banish evil spirits and be endowed to speak with words of distinction by my spirit. And at this time, the arm of my presence will come out and emerge from its dwelling place before the eyes of all people. And in that day we will sing anthems of joy together. And when next we meet, I will explain to you all that which I have written inside the stone of the little book. This concludes the little book of John the Revelator, chapter 1. Shalom.